Hey folks, welcome to Collaborative Annotating Part 2. In the first video, we took a look at how you might copy and paste text into a Google Doc, how you might share that Google Doc, and then how you might add comments to that Google Doc. In this one, we're going to take a look at tagging, and then also how you might convert a PDF into a Google Doc so that you can uh, have people annotate it and have a conversation around it. So let's get into this. All right. So in the last video, we act in the last video, we actually talked about how we would do commenting, right? So we had somebody go in, they made one comment, somebody came in, and made another comment. Now, if I wanted to draw somebody's attention to a particular thread, uh, if I wanted to respond specifically, I can do that actually pretty easily. And, and this might be a tactic many people are familiar with, but when I go to add a comment in this thread here, if I put the at symbol, at the beginning, and then I start to type somebody's name. Uh, in this case, I'm typing my name because I'm tagging myself. Uh, though anybody that falls under that name or those sets of letters will start to show up. And that can work in several, that will draw on several different ways. Often it will draw on your institutional account. So if you're in there as a college unbound uh, student or faculty member and you press at and you start to type in somebody's name, it might call up somebody who is in the email address in the, the among the email addresses here at College Unbound. If you have other contacts in your in your particular whatever Google account you're logged into and working on this, it may also draw from them. So you start to write it, and if it pops up, you just actually press on it so that you know you're making sure you're selecting the right one. In this case, yes, I would want to select um, Lance Eaton and College Unbound. And if you notice the comment, uh, it does do at Lance Eaton at College uh, Unbound edu. What this will do is this will actually tag me so that I will get an email telling me that I've been tagged. So I will do the initial tag, I will make my comments, and then when I'm done, I'll hit reply. And so this will actually, you know, it'll show up with like this. And again, that you notice that's a hyper, uh, that's a hyperlink letting me know that something has happened within this document. Meanwhile, um, now that it's all here, you know, I can continue to see the thread as it's evolving. And also, when I jump into my email, I notice that somebody has tagged me. So this is the name of the document, TED Talk Transcript. And this is the start of what the comment is like. Uh, Northeast Popular, that is the email that I was using just to show a different email than my own. And so once I open it up, this is what's really cool is it tells me this person replied to a comment in the following document, so TED Talk. It shows me what within the document was highlighted. And then when I go further down, scroll further down, it shows me, okay, here was the first comment, here was the second comment, and now this is the third comment, and this is where I've been tagged. Now notice right here, I also have a couple interesting buttons. I have reply. I have resolve and I have open. If I hit resolve, it's actually going to close the thread. It's not going to delete it, but it's going to close it, which means other people won't be able to see it. Uh, there may be cases why you you would want to do that, but largely, if you're trying to have a conversation around a around a text, you probably don't want to press that. But what's cool is right here in my Gmail, I can actually put the cursor into reply and start to type a reply. If I type open, it's actually going to pop open the document in a new tab, and I will be able to actually see it and uh, add my comments there. But this is the feature I really like, the fact that I can reply right here within my email and don't have to go into uh, the document itself. And because of the way the email is sent with all of this, all of this information here, I have a lot of the context and can probably reply right from my email. So. I decide, okay, I'll reply within the email. I'll write whatever it is that I'm going to write. And once I'm done, all I have to do is click that reply button. So once I do, even in this email that I've received, it shows up that that is now part of the thread. And of course, when I go to the document itself, it's shown up here on the right side. So I really like this tagging feature both for myself if I'm the one teaching the course because it means I will get these things sent to me and I can respond there in the email and kind of have a much stronger back and forth. Uh, if you think about traditional discussions, you know, 
you may or may not even get a notification. You have to kind of go through those link hoops to find the discussion and then to get the context, all of that. This here, it's brought all to me. And this is also why it's useful to reply and tag students, uh, because sometimes you may be, as part of a thread, responding directly to the student and want to bring their attention to it. You may also want to bring other students into the discussion. If you're talking about something that you know another student knows about, you might want to say, you know, tag that student and say, hey, what are your thoughts on this? So it's a really nice, useful feature. Uh, it makes, for me, using Google Docs as a place to do discussions around text really powerful re and really easy and smooth. All right, so now we're going to talk about how you would actually convert a PDF into a Google Doc, especially if you want to use it for annotating. So if you open up, a, if you open up your Google Drive and you upload a document, so you would go over to New, and you would do file upload and you would want to find the somewhere on your computer where you've saved the pdf that you want students to annotate this is the one that i found so i would click on it it would show up up here i would say open and it would shortly upload uh, once it uploads it is now clickable so if i wanted to click on it it would pop up like this. So this is still in PDF form. And I know it's in PDF form because it has this little red icon here and it says, you know, the title and then it has PDF. But I can also open it in Google Docs. So if I click on that, the first thing it's gonna do, and depending on the size of your PDF, is it's gonna sit on a screen like this. This is the process of converting it to a Google Doc. It can take anywhere from you know, half a second to, I've had to take 30 seconds or more, uh, but that was because it was a very large PDF. Once it's done, it will open up that Google Doc. Now, one thing to know is with PDFs, it is not going to always be perfect. You're going to run into a few hiccups with the conversion process. The first you may not realize is up here has been truncated a little bit. If I go up back a few screens, notice this was up here. This image was here. You had this nice header, but when we converted it, it kind of all got pushed together. That's going to happen. So I would be careful about using visuals or something that has a lot of visual uh, materials in it. I would also be careful and not use documents that use two columns because Google usually, if the page has two columns on it, Google usually doesn't do well with that. But if it is, but otherwise you can upload it, convert it, and now you have the opportunity to play around with it. So here's the one other thing that it does is yes, it has brought all of the information over um, and it is largely smooth, but depending on what kind of grammar uh, checker that you have, it might notice things and you know the conversion process might produce these things where there's these extra spaces between different words uh, unnecessarily. So just be aware of that. Like it might need a little bit of cleaning up once you convert it, uh, but it it still converts it over pretty well if it is a sing, you know, if it is um, if it uses the full page and doesn't have a lot of images. Um, so it's really simple, easy to do, and can save you a lot of time in trying to find you know a, a easy copyable text. All right, so that's all it for this for this video. We want to keep it just kind of clear around how you can uh, tag people and how you might convert a PDF. Hopefully this is useful. And as always, if you have additional questions, if you have a, are interested in um, using this in some way and want to collaborate, if you have ideas about how you've done this differently or, or can enhance what we are talking about here, we always love to hear from you. So thank you so much. And I look forward to hearing from you.